Dave from Roselle, Illinois. I got a 2021 uh, FB, 10FB that is. Yeah, when I got it, I took all the, had a, the dealer take all the graphics off of it. And I put these on and I also put on the ones on the, the galley and then on the front. It's a, basically a compass with mountains on it. And then uh, tons of mods. Uh, this grill, I got it brand new. It had, uh, it was uh, a collapsible grill. And I took all the mechanisms off and I mounted it to the fender on a T-rail. So it just slides onto the fender. Very nice. And then got a pole and I modified this so I can adjust it to whatever height the camper was sitting because it changes all the time. That's pretty slick. I also made a rack for the grill on top. And the rack up here is made specifically for that grill. I just throw it up there and strap it down. And nice, so you're carrying the grill up top when yes, you're traveling? Yes. Really nice. So tell us about this awning. Um, just an Amazon awning. You know what brand it is? No, you know, that's a good question. I don't remember. You is like it? It's been sturdy. Yeah, and... Actually, it's worked quite well. I can't complain. We'll find it's, out uh, what awning that it's is. It's an. Uh, I don't know what the name brand on this one is. Nice. I think it's on the cover, baby. So tell me about the propane and the tongue okay. box. Uh, what I did was I put in a 10 inch mattress, took every the whole storage out from underneath the bed, and that's how this came to be. So everything that was underneath the bed is now in this box. Can we open it? Sure. Just lift up on it. Oh, I got take it. So nice. So we're seeing this a tools. lot, you know, a catch all for some right. for all some tools, the water hose, hold the batteries. And now you're rocking two 20 pound tanks. Yes. This one, since you can't run a propane uh device that has a regulator already on it the side port this tank is high pressure to that side port i put a high pressure hose on there so i can hook my grill up and it'll work fine because it already has a regulator so what we're talking about here is the bushwhacker comes with a quick connect for propane now typically it's post regulated so you have to use straight hoses with no regulator to use with devices like this grill. So what we did here is he hooked up a high pressure line here to give a lot more versatility and to allow you to use a much wider variety of propane appliances. I love it. And this grill looks pretty nice. Oh yeah, this is my toolbox. This propane tank is uh, stock one that runs the cooktop, the furnace, um, everything, and that's pretty much all, all it runs, but this is the, the one that's regulated off of this tank, and this one's high pressure. Nice. And then, uh, coming down the side here, everybody knows what this is, or where this was. Oh, that's the, the sprayer port yeah. from the galley. <laughs> Very nice. Gives you a spot to spray things right, off. so I can hook my hose up and... You know, use it. Very it's nice. Anything. I also put in a uh, cable port, so I can watch cable TV. And that's kind of it on this side. I moved the switch for the pump closer to the sink. And the way the cooktop used to be here, and the other sink was here originally. And then I moved the cooktop oh, here. Okay. Very nice. So that's where it is now. And the furnace is still here, it's still the original uh, furnace. See, this is amazing, and you're being modest here, but this is a total gut and replace. I mean, a whole new countertop. Um, you know, very, very nice.
Uh, Thirty awesome. core per push I, RV. Found these uh, bars, so you just lift it up from anywhere. Nice. And you slide it down. This is that 30 port. Now that's slick, so it's the same style of lift, but we use the C channel here to be able to lift and close. Very, very nice. Yeah, do the same thing. Now it's coming down on us. We're gonna have to take a break. Yeah, when I remodeled this, um, I took the pump was underneath here, and I made this all storage now. And I took the pump and I mounted in a waterproof box right under the right under the back here. See, that's right pretty there. handy. And now that style of 12 volt pump, they use those on boats too. It's like a bilge pump. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a pretty weather resistant part. Right. Um, and it's very, very smart because you have plenty of space down there. Right. And I bet it gave you a lot more storage. Yeah. Show me these uh, that was, cabinets. That was the point. Right. These well, cabinets that, look really nice. Well, basically, this cabinet is <laughs> what it is full of stuff. That's <laughs> right. how, how it should be. And mainly, it's, I have it's all, actually I have tape. It goes all the way there. back. That um, holds all of our dishes and pots and pans. Right. And, and I uh, moved the heater duct on this model was on this side by mm -hmm. your feet. And since I got such a taller bed, your feet were like right on top of it. So I moved it over to the center. So it's coming out right in the center of the inside of the cabin. So hinges, I struggled on what I was going to use on this thing to make sure that it wouldn't come open as I'm driving. Because I know hinges on campers are. Uh, fun. And what I did was I took these little aluminum um, angle iron and mounted the one piece of the hinge on here and then the other piece on the doors. And these are adjustable so you can tighten them or loosen them as much as you want. So they close really tightly and none of them open this whole trip. That is a really, really nice galley. I love what you've done with it. I love the tile, the looks, and it's just so much more functional. Then, yeah, so uh, we have countertop space now. It's awesome. Um, before nice. the original galley, you didn't have any countertop space because you had the cooktop on top, the sink, and a cooler. And now we have places to put things. Like the curd is number one thing that's got to go up there. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and you even got a Keurig to match the kitchen. Actually, I think we matched the galley to the curd. <laughs> <laughs> I moved everything up. Like I said, the heating duct I put in the center, and then uh, CO and everything I moved up because we're so much higher than it was originally. Uh, we, I removed all the storage to put this 10-inch Serta mattress in here in a box. I bought it, brought it here, put the box inside and opened it up. <laughs> and it's so been there. Steve got one of those packaged mattresses, a 10 inch, that, that's gonna be pretty comfortable. But I also love the idea that you fit it in in the box. Do you think you could take it out if you had to? Yeah, yeah I think I could. Yeah. If you can fold it up to get it in, you know, to get it in a box, I'm pretty sure I could fold it up to get it out. <laughs> At least not, not like it was in the box. Well, anyway. we did because we had to take it out to go. So I'm asking Steve about these two outside lights. On this FB model, most of the time the switch turns them both on at the same time. I'm noticing that he's got some independent control with switches on each side. That's definitely different. How did you pull that off? Um, it was actually quite easy. On the side the switch is on originally, the wires run across the top. So all I did was hook a another wire hooked it to positive and then I pulled the other wire through the new wire through all the way to the other side and hooked it and put a switch in there and hooked it to the switch and then hooked the original wire to the other light. Now I really like this and I think it's going to help some people out because I've done this before for people that have the 10 FB but I've done the dual rocker switch here. So to pull it over to both sides the, the is pretty is, nice. Is if I want to get out on my side. Exactly. And I need a light, I have to reach across my wife. To and a lot of times out. you're coming in from the outside to flip the light on. Exactly. So if you're coming on the driver's right, side, so it doesn't matter. that's, I think I'll steal that. I have a 10 SS, yeah, but yeah, when yeah. I'm working on others, I think that'll be no, the go to it's, now. It's worked out phenomenally, so I really like it.
Dina and I am from Idaho and this is my Bushwhacker 10FB 2021. Okay, so one of the first things we did was the Jackie up because we're pulling with a low tow vehicle, an Outback. And we're in the mountains of Idaho, not right now, but when we tow in the mountains of Idaho, sometimes when we're turning around, absolutely hitting the jack on mountain and I had the same issues. Now, can you get the lift gate on your Subaru open? Yes. You take it out. So that's another huge, yes. huge benefit. So they've seen that before. I, yes. uh, I did a video on that, but what a nice mod. And, and that's where I found out oh. about it. <laughs> well, very good. They, yes. they owe me a cut then. Dang, Brian. <laughs> yeah. And my husband said, was like, are you watching Brian again? <laughs> like, uh -huh. This is This is what I've been hearing the whole rally is I cost people a lot of money. So I love the setup on the front because it's simple yes. and it just, it does what you need. So that milk carton, you have that strapped down or can it come off? It is, it can come off. Just removing the bungee. No, that's okay, same yep. setup. Yep. yep. And then same with this, I, d I have a helmet um, net, bungee Very net. Very smart. So we have it strapped down and I can unstrap it pretty easy. So I really like this because I went through a couple different types of mesh and they wear out in the sun. The helmet mesh is designed to be outdoors. Yes. So it's got some UV protection. And it's Harbor Freight. So I see you started on your stickers. Yes. You've abbreviated to the bushwhack. Yeah, yeah. Well, and then this side, I just got hack. No. <laughs> yeah. You got to make it your own. It, it's. It's done for now. Perfect. Good enough. And then I, uh, we put the red tape, red brake light tape on both sides of this. This is really smart. So this is a simple, cheap way to put tail light tape on it. It doesn't attract the bugs. Yeah. And that light is so bright you could see back in time. So yes. it, yeah. It, yeah, it, it was like calling to... Mars and beyond. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Absolutely. For sure. Now I see you have an interesting modification here. Uh, <laughs> Um, that is um, thanks to Brooks. He put down NC bound. NC bound. Yep, fr from Minnesota to here. I like your little stabilizing risers. Well, we heard that it was a good thing not to deploy them all the way out. Yeah, they have a lot more stabilizing ability when you give them a nice angle here. It gives you more than when you stand them up all the way. So that's really that's really a nice design. And then in the design. mountains, you got some rock and some not. So to, in order to keep things parallel. Absolutely. We've not really we took out the K2 cooler. But otherwise, everything's pretty much the same. Now, I love this, and this, to me, has somebody who uses the trailer a lot written all over it. Yes. I can tell right off the bat, like, the things that we get rid of and the things that are important. So you're, you're using the igloo for some extra water. Yeah. It also helps with your tongue weight, depending yes. what you're doing on the front. Yes. And so it, whenever I have access to water, I refill this. This was in my garage unused, and I was like, hey, that'll fit, let's make it work. That's perfect. Now, if anyone watching this doesn't have a bushwhacker, we don't have city water hookups. So sometimes to fill the reservoir, this container with a gas style spout is like a lifesaver. Yes. You don't have to pack up camp and move the whole trailer. Yeah. You bring five gallons back, I love yeah. it. My husband cut this open so that we could get in and use this. And you're making good use he of that. He moved the vent up and off of the side so that we had room underneath there. Very, very nice. So it was handy. And I added um, reflective tape. That'll come in handy Just as in well. Just in case the, the echo Kurt brake thing comes yeah. loose and I don't have brake lights, <laughs> I still have a safety second back up. Very nice. So can you, let's go up front and show me that echo. Cause I know a lot of people are using that Kurt device, uh, okay. the Bluetooth brake control. I think I'd love to hear about that. Okay. So my husband put a bungee on to help secure it. And then it's the, um, an app on my phone. Yeah, so for me, and I've talked about this before on the channel a little bit, this is one of those devices that you have to give a mixed review. Yeah. It's like you see that Dina modified it with a little bungee. They fall off, and it's not rare. When you are looking at the reviews for these, it is super 
super common that they fall off and you end up losing them. I, I made a joke once that the easiest way to get one of these is just look beside the highway yeah, and you'll yeah. find them. But now the upside of these, you don't have to wire your tow vehicle to control your brakes. When this plugs into your vehicle, it uses a Bluetooth to activate the brakes on your trailer. All the bushwhackers have magnetic brakes on them and then you don't have to put an actual brake control module in your car. Right. So it is nifty, but just make sure you strap it in real yes, good. And yes. have you had any sync issues with your phone? Have you lost connectivity? I I don't know if it was sync. I've had I've had to take it in um, after one of our trips to the manufacturer, not the manufacturer, the dealer to get some warranty work because the, the wheels were locking up yeah. when I was using this, yeah. like bad. And I was getting ready to go on a trip by myself and I needed that. So they replaced, I think it was both hubs okay. that they replaced. So it doesn't seem like it was an issue with the Kurt control or more probably an issue with the brakes that they were biting yeah. pretty yeah. good. Okay. Otherwise it's been, yeah, we went up Blue Ridge and I put it on. Otherwise I've been pulling it without it. But, so yeah. one of the standout things with Dina's setup here is she is decking out this outdoor space and <laughs> I am, I'm into it. <laughs> so the base of your system is what? What is your awning? It's an eight by eight Iron Man four by four. And then I've got the extension Iron Man wall. So this Iron Man is the awning that folds up to the top and the arms come down. This is an aftermarket additional piece. Yeah. But man, that is nice. And it gives it tapers privacy. The, tapers the water away from the campsite. Looks like it gives you a nice seating area and yeah. privacy. Yeah. So I love I this. Door. These are all signs of people that go camping a lot is you get into clothespins and hanging things any chance yep. you can get. Uh, I see a really nice fridge here. What are we working with? You know, I don't know the name brand. It That's was on perfect. Amazon yeah. and it was an inexpensive and I got it damaged. So I got it even less. Nice. That's You're always a good nice. pro tip <laughs> is to shop around and uh, bushwhacker folks don't mind scratch and dent sales. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> and in your hand, Husky totes. So that's a Home Depot score. Home Depot, yep, yep. It looks waterproof. It is. It and is they're waterproof. stackable. They are stackable. And then they've got different sizes. I just got the smaller because it's just me, so it's easy for me to tote. Oh, it's, and if you left it out in the rain or something, it no wasn't. No big deal. No big deal. No big deal. So it's, from I, food. It's got a gasket, so even bugs aren't going to get into it. Very nice. So uh, I think that is a good score, especially when you're playing camper Tetris with our tow vehicles. Yes, you got to yes, yeah. jam everything back in. Now you're on this trip doing a, a solo trip. So you have your inside set up for one. One. Yep. And this was an addition after I left because the first uh, campground was uh -huh. Bug Haven. And that so was magnetic bug. screens. Yeah. But now I love this. This is what I do a lot of times winter camping is you set the inside up for one and it gives you this nice area to store things. We're not winter camping now, but the AC is there. And, and again, it gives you so much more space than when you have two people and a giant dog. And we changed over the door, over the air, air conditioner. So it, it did open up and we changed it to open down uh -huh. to create extra space. See, these are the little things that I wish the manufacturers would pay attention to. Um, I see some companies do, but it's simple mods like that just make it a lot easier to yeah. use the trailer and they're not difficult or expensive. Nope. I'm seeing some sort of command hook with yep. a, just the perfect size uh, waste basket. Lightweight, packable. And those command hooks, I've had mine on the trailer for a lot of miles that you haven't had a fall off or anything nope. me neither hot nope. cold winter summer rain it, it seems to hold up so i am just blown away with this campsite uh now this is not arb what do nope. we got here <laughs> it's something i found at a yard sale it's a reflective to help try to keep the heat out Very and if nice. it rains down it also helps keep the rain from oh, splashing down okay so yeah it definitely has some refractive yeah abilities there and you're just handy with the bungees and the quick connects um i like it yeah so what is your favorite part of your whole setup oh 
I know that's a tough question, that but what is. do you like about having a bushwhacker? The versatility, because we live in the mountains and I like knowing that I'm safe. I like knowing I have four seasons that I can camp comfortably. I mean, we've, we've camped under the snow and that was great when I was younger, but it's not so nice now that I'm a little older. So the Bushwhacker has AC and heat, heat that you can use off grid with the propane. Yes. Um, like it is an insulated trailer. It's got some clearance. It's, I use mine in the winter, so definitely a pretty nice setup. But let me just uh, compliment you on the ingenuity and uh, really expanding the space of a teardrop. We don't, we didn't buy a camper to hang out indoors. No. So when you have this ability to make kind of the best of tent camping and the best of RV camping. Yes. Right. And, and it helps keep the mosquito repellent indoors too. I've got a coil going in there, so it keeps it there where it belongs. So it, well, it's clear that you're out here using this thing. Can I ask you how much travel you've been doing? A lot. Yeah, I can tell. <laughs> I can tell. Where have you been in the last couple of weeks? Uh, Currently, last... we're in just outside of uh, Asheville and Hot Springs, North Carolina. So we camp a lot around Idaho. We've been to um, Utah. We've been to Oregon, a couple different places in Oregon, Montana, South Dakota, North Dakota, Minnesota, and all of the states in between Minnesota and here. Okay. <laughs> and I'm getting ready to go to Georgia when this is all well, done. Well, that is clear from the campsite that you have. Well, thank you so much yeah. for the tour and, uh, you know, the mods and showing us around your site. Tom Kelly, Boca Raton, Florida. Here's my trailer. It's a Bushwhacker FB10. Uh, um, got it back in, let me see, March of 2020, and you know, joined up the crew and uh, started doing mods as soon as I got it. All right, let's see some of these mods. Take us right. on the front. So, now I see you got the super handy. Yep, got the super handy because I was too lazy to crank it every time, and I'm getting old. And along with that, I did the two propane, two propane tanks on the front. Nice. So, now you have those plumbed together, um, or you do one then the other? I do one then the other. The okay. one is staying on here for the trailer only. The other one is for a barbecue pit Perfect. and a fire pit. <laughs> so, and then in here, we have my batteries. I have a Renergy 100 amp hour. Okay. Okay, and then I got the, uh, it's a knockoff of the Renergy sure. monitoring system. Yeah. Just telling you how much it's going to last and so on and so forth. So you're plugged uh, in so everything's yeah. topped I off? I put this board in. I put in an exhaust fan when I used to have the water bill. Okay, so back it. when you had vented, yeah. Right, I had it vented then. out. I powered it on, but I also put lights in the box. Nice. So at night. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if we could see yeah, it, but it's, it's but, decked uh, out yeah. with some LEDs. It's got some LEDs all the way around. I see you got some inline fuses and cir circuit breakers. Yep, yep. and I got Cut my battery switch. disconnect right Perfect. here. So, got that Very all nice. wired in. Now, the other side is like a catch-all, right? The other side's a catch-all. The other nice. side is where I put the cords, the blocks for, you know, leveling yep. and wheel chocks and just anything. And this is so going. important. You know, you have the pickup truck, which to me is my favorite mod because you end up needing so many places for storage. But yeah. yeah, so I'm seeing a lot of these today, you know, going yeah. with the tongue boxes. A lot of people are going with the tongue boxes, you know, and each one is different. And if you got a square box, I want you to all remember this. You can jackknife real easy to tag the corner of your box. Hey, that's, <laughs> how, that's how we know you're using it. Right, yeah. right. A little hammer to dig that out. But uh, so when you, I pulled in, I was way off level. So I got two blocks underneath okay bring it up i can tell by using the leveler that i got on the front right perfect there. 
Now I see you did what the rest of us did. You stripped them stickers. Where'd you get your decals? I got the decals from Amazon. Nice. Um, I had the trailer for about maybe three hours and we ripped <laughs> the bushwhacker stickers off. Yeah, that's... Um, uh, now you don't have a free solo, so this awning you bought, which one did you go with? I went with uh, one on Amazon. It's called the Darsha. Okay, I saw another one of these today. So yeah. a Darche. Yeah. I'll try to get links for people in the description, but this yeah, is but quite nice. Wider and longer than normal ones that you get. Nice, now you have the Hasika with the yes. suction cups yep. for the side. Now this gives you a nice little extension on your galley. Yes. Um, how Have you used it in the rain? This is the only second time I've used it. Okay. But in the rain, when you have an awning, you have this. The water always flows towards the front here. I got That's you. That's the only bummer about the whole thing. That makes sense. So because you know, it's arched in the center. Over, this whole area is getting flooded. Okay. Makes sense. Right. But it's still nice. It's a sunshade. Right. It's and if you, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm sure yeah. we could figure something out. Well, with another or... mod I did was the table. This is nice. Right. I've seen this before. Right. And, hey, uh, hey. Look at that. You look at that. Would you look, look at that? that? <laughs> yeah. look, look. that now that's look. a mod. We got the bushwhacker sticker going on. Nice. Right? You know, so, but it's really easy if you just want to remove it. Oh, I love it. Okay. So you, rare earth magnets. Rare earth magnets from Amazon. Yeah. And about that's five of them. Was, I was thinking you had the channel, but yep. no, we got ferrous metal here. Yep, so. so those are rugged magnets. And when you mm -hmm. click this on, watch out for your fingers. Nice. So when you line it up, so this is pretty slick. Now you're like me. We got refrigerators. We got coolers. I got yep. more refrigerators. You can't use them enough or have enough of them. Right. So you, that's a Yeti 50. That's a Yeti 30. Oh yeah, Yeti 50. Oh, it's got to be 50 liters yep. then. Yep. So yeah, 50 liter, and uh, it nice. looks pretty good. Three, two to three days holding nice. Sure. You know. Um, show us, uh, show us what you did in galley. here. So the galley we have. One of the fridges that you can't find anymore is the original Calmera. This was one that was really popular right. on the forum at first because it fit in the space without a lot of no mods, modification but it's whatsoever. basically discontinued. So now right. it's most people going with a Bouge RV or the Alp right. Pool. Right, right, but right, uh, right. I like, see this is, you know, again, it shows me that you're using it. These little mods, you got the clip on paper towels. This is a magnet yep, with bamboo. For your, yep, for your knives, silverware drying things off bins keep things organized up top stereo speaker upgrade the oh rock for which one gates. did you go with cross for five game all right now did you have to use a baffle or spacer um not on these the but only on the one on the inside under the headboard is where i'm yet you need to put them in now this is like is this motion or is no, this, this just is a just button touch you touch it nice you can hold it to go dimmer Triple A's, double A's. Um, it's uh, USB charging. Oh, okay. So, so it's got onboard for battery. A long time, no batteries. Just plug it in when it dies. So um, now you got the same thing that I do on here. I have right. a valve on mine, but these again, I've been every time I show one of these, I've been mentioning to people the earlier trailers had the Durafoss connection, right? Like mine. The the newer ones now have different automotive connections. Nice. People have been chasing Horrible. them down. Um, the best advice I can give is just go to like Home Depot, Lowe's, Trading Post, East, and just try to find the exact right, fitting that your hose right. came with to yeah, do that. Yeah, because you know, you have to find these, it's this quick connect. And that one, yeah, my, yeah. that's the Dura faucet style. The right. new ones are all different, so yeah. it's hard yeah. to point people in the right direction. The next mod I did was this. Now, this is kind of tricky, it's just a voltmeter you turn it on. It'll tell you how many volts it is, right? Yep. I'm at 13.7, but I got rid of the faucet switch. Okay. So what I have now is this is on. I just nice. I control variable voltage, variable and, it gives voltage. It, and that works with that sure flow pump. Right. <laughs> so you can turn it and just have it trickle. I love when it. You're doing stuff. So uh, and if you, you do done, a lot of boondocking, water management is key. Right. I love the faucet. Most of the time, I'm filling up a spray bottle because 24 gallons goes quick when it you're does, doing it dishes. Does so quick. very nice mod there. Yep. I like that. The little variable switch yeah. and then when you're all done you just flip her off and now you're, you're totally off yep and when you're wiring these some people that really want to see their voltage all the time you can run your line wire in here first and then over to the switch yeah. if you wanted for that to stay on yeah. um and then you but for switch. me another draining yeah 
save battery when you that's, can. If I don't need that light, I won't use exactly. it. Exactly. That's you know? no. So, um, yeah. Other than that, back here didn't do anything. I have uh, the lights for underneath. This is just using the uh, old shopping bags. Perfect. And uh, of course, the storage down here. Nice. Pots and pans, and you know the sure flow. We got some bins to actually fit in there. Very nice. Um, for the water treatment. And now stuff I like cut that. you off. You were yeah. saying you got lights underneath. I have lights underneath. There. So I have uh, multicolored lights that you can turn on and off at night. Um, Very yeah. cool. See, now this is an upgraded power cord, the Furion cord. That's what came with it. Oh well, this is bushwhacker for you. Yeah. That's an expensive cord, much yeah, more expensive than <laughs> the ones that most of us got. Yeah, that came with it. Um, let me see. It's here inside. I upgraded a. I put in a, uh, a panel. It's his birthday. For the for the uh, air conditioner with the heat problem, everybody tore it up. Put fans inside. I have a radiator fan underneath. No, it's in the bottom to suck the air down. So now that's going to be waterproof. That's waterproof. So that's a big score. Right, so. And now what we're talking about here is that these FB models, and this is cold. Uh, there's cold air blowing <laughs> out of this trailer right now, so I know it's working. But these had issues venting the heat out of it. So the air AC would shut down. So he's cut vents in the side. And what he was describing is you powered a additional radiator, radiator fan, fan to blow the heat like a, out like a six to eight inch radiator fan so i've linked in my other video to matt's how to do those mods but basically right. uh right here but when you plug in a radiator fan at 12 volts high speed you have no way to regulate it so right here nice look. look right here there's the fan switch, but it's variable speed as well. Excellent. So if I want to crank this thing up, yeah. you can hear it underneath the trailer. Very cool. But at night, when it's loud, I can turn it down. Just, so it's just find the right spot. Right, I the right see spot. you did your TV. Is that 12 volt? Uh, yeah, no, it's uh, 110 volt. Okay. So but I have an inverter if one case I oh, want Oh, there you go. Uh -huh. And I see you did your lights over. That yep. was one of them. These are the uh, touch. It goes blue. No, no. Very nice. And then he's underneath. So. Very nice. Okay. Now, I like the Velcro on Keep It Simple. It's a pillowcase. Pillowcase. That's that's and up my on. alley. Bring it up. Very up nice. So, I put on the uh, front feet. Front feet underneath. Okay, there we go. Um. Let me tell you, uh, just having it on the front there, when the trailer's rocking, <laughs> you want to make sure you're sure-footed, as they say. A oh, wild man. A oh, wild man. Yeah. Now, this is slick for people with the jackie up, because, and I should do this on mine, that'll allow you to get level, stabilize yeah. yourself, and then you can take, take the it. jackie up out. You can add the wheel when you want the wheel. Right. And you can so, take all the weight, so if there is moving around, you're not going to damage the pull from exactly yeah sometimes on uneven ground you get a quite a span on the front right now i see the the yakima bike rack right it's a fork rack now i used one on mine it's a different brand but a high-end high-end brand and because of the suspension on the trailer the bike bounces out Oh, really? Have you used it yet? I've used it twice. I've had two bikes up there. And I didn't have a lick of problem. So but that's also, a good tip to hear. Okay. With a bungee. So that's probably what I'll have to do. Uh, you got to realize the suspension on these trailers, even with that Dexter torsion axle, it, it's not like your car. No. So it, you're dealing with a lot more force up there. And I was bouncing down a dirt road and, and just, just right out. yeah, <laughs> chucked the bike right out of it. And now it holds on the back. Right. It's not a hazard to the traffic behind me, but it scratched up my roof and oh, yeah. uh, it wasn't yeah. fun. So, uh, awesome trailer. I'm having fun today. Uh, I bet you are, man. You're learning a lot. <laughs> yeah, this is. How many mods you getting out of this? I'm going to steal all of this stuff. But now I'm looking in the background before I move on to the next person. I'm seeing that you have set this up. This uh, is my for uh, fun as well. glamping setup when I go out <laughs> with the boys. So awning? Yep, twenty two zero awning, six foot by six by about six by six. Some uh traction boards, so you plan on going where you're not supposed to. I like that. And, uh, the, uh, 
Yes, sir. Hi, Liz. There yeah. you go. Some extra water containers or gas. Gas and water. Uh, yeah. Zombie light for the back. It's a dual lit, uh, low beam, high beam, uh, rough country light. So this this RTT and this 2030 stuff, you've been happy with it? I love this thing. It's three years old and it's like brand new if I was to pull that thing off. That's pretty slick. So yeah. this opens up to a tent, yeah. which would be nice. Bed. Really? Yeah. Very it, nice. It pivots right here. And this will open up all the way out to about right here. I love it. Yeah. Well, uh, bushwhacker folks at this rally, they like to have fun. I've yeah. been seeing some <laughs> nice stuff. Um, now you got the propane section. Right. Now I see from here you have the regulator on there. So that's right. going to connect directly to, to your tank, tank, not to the what low I flow port. What I normally do is because I take the tank off. If I'm going to use it at my second tank. I take the tank off if it's fire pits over there or my gas grill is somewhere else. I'll just undo the bolt and take the tank off. Very and nice. leave one tank on that's always dedicated to the trailer. I, I, I think it's a good setup. I. I have had so much luck with the 20 pound tank. I see people going to the doubles and I'm thinking, I went winter camping with my furnace for right. long times on 20 pounds, but it makes sense now I'm seeing the gas generators and the fire pits. Right, it's it's right, a pretty right. nice- the gas uh, grill, I mean, cause the stove is great, but it just doesn't give you that flavor. That's you know? right. So I got a little carry portable gas grill, like a Weber. Perfect. You know, you just carry it with you. All right, man. Well, yeah. I appreciate it. I'm going to keep moving. Not a problem. Um, I got your shirt with the one on the printing on the back. Oh, well, you should have wore that today. <laughs> no, not tomorrow. <laughs> Just, I will throw a link in there for anyone who's been getting this DIY outdoor swag. I really appreciate the support. Yeah, yeah. Allie Michalik. I'm from uh, just outside of Charlotte, North Carolina, and this is my 2022 Free Solo. I got it in January and love it. So the thing I like about my Free Solo is just the fact that I can take it off grid, go camping. I don't have to worry about finding power. Um, I just kind of made it my own. Now, for those of you who don't know, Allie and I are neighbors way down here in the cheap seats <laughs> it's just the two of us the campsite is huge but we have no water or electric over here so we have to kind of be contained we both got our bathroom tents even though there is a facility way, way down, down the way there. but besides saving money I, I think we both just enjoy the quality of campsites that we get by staying that way having off-grid rigs absolutely so, so what type of mods have you done to do that I just have a second battery, that's all. And I'm not even sure if it's ever flipped to that yep. one or not. Um, since I'm off grid, I will use the USB ports to charge you know, my phone or whatever. Sometimes, most of the time, I just use my EcoFlow um, Delta or, power box. Yeah, yeah. Or, and I do have a solar panel for it, so I can recharge that as needed. But, um, you so, know, Allie and I have been hanging out this weekend and you know, there's multiple ways to make your trailer off grid. And some folks do it kind of like I did, spending a lot of money, a lot of solar, <laughs> high end batteries. Allie's out here doing the, the backpacking thing. I mean, everything. Well, with a very large backpack. <laughs> yeah, a very large backpack, but her solar panel is a trickle charger. It's only yep. like a 10 watt. That's all it is. Charger, Ooh, I'm stepping That's all right. over dogs. <laughs> um, so the idea is she's just not using it. She don't have to make it. Uh, right. <laughs> she's just, uh, not going through a lot of the capacity on those batteries. Now you told me you'd never have trouble. You haven't run them down. Yeah. Not to my knowledge. Yeah. Well, you'd know yeah. about it. They, <laughs> I would know about start. it. And usually I've already taken them down, but I'll have, you know, solar lights, you know, that go around, um, the awning and, 
than solar motion detection lights, you know, so that when I come out, I'm not tripping and falling over the route like I did the other day. <laughs> so. No, these little gadgets are getting so handy and they hold up now. They used to work one or two times. Now they, they actually last. Oh yeah, and a lot of times I'll just um, tuck them in my windshield on my way to camp so they're charged yeah, you know, when I get there. I love it. We do the same thing. Did you get a Lucy light, one of those little inflatable ones? I don't have a Lucy light. No. Um, I have, you know, just cheaper ones. Yeah, that thing sits on our dashboard. Yeah, I'm cheap too, but it sits on my <laughs> dashboard while I'm driving. Yeah. Now, the other thing that stands out to me, yep, exactly. This was always my preference over the awnings. The awning, which I do have, I've just mm -hmm. never used. This is a first for me. I know a lot of people that like the canopies, but you actually have an awning. It came with your trailer and you're not using it. Right. So, and it is a, a the Thule. So, I it's mean, a it's, good a, one. it's a good one. I just, uh, I don't want a room. Mm -hmm. You know, I do have side panels that I can put up if need be, but uh, I prefer not to have them. I don't want to feel closed in. That's why I'm out here exactly exactly but, um, but i do have it um if i need it and decide to start using it well I, yeah and, and you could move this around the other side if you wanted and oh, use the absolutely. awning doors on know. both sides yeah and so I, I like the versatility and you know to each their own i think there's something to be said about these but for me it's the higher ceiling being able to hang things you right. can move it around and I think it's easier to set these up at home if they have to dry out. Oh gosh! Than yeah. to to you know try to open up your awning awning in the garage. But you right. know, like I said, I think there's something to be said about both. But I I think we're kindred spirits on that one. And then since I knew that I would just be boondocking um, with mine, the air conditioner comes out the side and has a, a vent that goes over it. Well, I just took the air conditioner out. And this is a max air fan cover that would normally be on top. And I had them put it on. It's got a, um, a grate on the inside so wasp and stuff can't get in. And then it has the original grate that would have been on the outside of the air conditioner on the inside. So I have that space now as storage and also as airflow. So if it's a bad storm and I can't have my top vent open, um, I just pop a fan up there and, you know, use that to circulate the air. See, for me, this is really slick. And I think you're going to get a lot of people's attention with this one. So as a pure off-grid user, a lot of people have dropped the AC. It makes a nice base cabinet or a yes, nice wall does. cabinet on the inside. But you're still stuck with the problem of it being exposed to the elements. I've seen people cut pieces of plastic and different things to cover it up. This is a, I'll try to get some close-ups. It's a Max Air cover. There's no nope. fan in there. There's no fan. But it's just cut around and sealed around the stock. So this could come off. Right. This yes, is and the, uh, the louver she was talking about. I have it so that if I need to put my air conditioner back in, you know, it's, and I wouldn't even have to take this off. No, it, it would still work. But, and now uh, she can put a fan inside there, get uh, some excellent cross ventilation mm -hmm. when you're in there it's sealed from the weather yeah but all the other times you have a really nice place to store things right i love it i love yep. it i love it um, so this over here is like the hasika just know. a lot cheaper yeah okay <laughs> uh, we're like i said we're cut from the same cloth with this stuff how have you liked this oh it works great and it does have a piece that you know hangs or blocks sure. you know the the sun if you need but you know, it's been folded up there all weekend. My trip down here, seeing so many bushwhackers, I'm seeing how common this is. This is something that I never did, um, but it, it's nice. It, it adds a nice little space back here. These were invented, for anyone who doesn't know, to actually go over the lift gates of cars. Which is what I originally bought it for. Yeah. It does uh, prevent the rain from dripping in on this side as it comes off the the back i see that yeah you know it drips down there and i see that you're going with the suction cups yes and the suction cups i'll try to find a link for those because i know people will like that it's nicer than 
putting like an adhesive, uh, like a 3M or something, those come right off, right? Yeah. Very well, nice. I do have one of those on the other side that I used to hang my um, dog leash on. I, I do the same thing. I have the, the command hooks and uh, they've yep. been on there for a couple of years, winter, summer, they're, they, it's they, amazing. Yep, it's they really stick. surprised me. So this is a mod. Tell um, me what you got there. This is one of those screens that you see a scene on TV, you know, and it has the Velcro on the top and, you know, it opens, it goes back. But the, I got the ones with the magnets, so it closes behind it. Um, and then the Velcro's on the inside across and then a couple pieces down here so that it keeps it sealed. But it's also got the weights on the bottom to, you know, keep it hanging down. I just tuck it in the step and then, you know, you just push and do whatever you need and, and it allows me more airflow with it open. And most of the time that's the way I sleep too, with it, you know, wide open. Well, that, I mean, it's nice. It's a really nice mod and it's a lot more than you would get out of just opening your window. It feels Absolutely. a lot more like tent camping. Absolutely. But it, it is clear to me, having been on the road and spent a lot of time in a teardrop that you in fact, have a lot of the experience. If you just got this trailer, where was your experience prior to owning a teardrop? Car camping and tent camping. That's, so we were looking at her tow vehicle. She's, she's set up for car camping and she knows how to do it. So I've always said, and I've heard other people say, when you come from car camping or tent camping to teardrop camping, it feels like the lap of luxury. Yes. If you're coming from a giant airstream and, and coming down to a teardrop, yeah. that's when I think a lot more people have, uh, have trouble with it. And then another thing with the free solo, we just walked right by it. It comes with a two inch um, oh, ho, ho. hitch. I'm glad you brought us back And then I this. got an adapter and then this table, you can adjust the um, you know, whether it's straight up or at a slant or even one lower and it just stays on when I travel You know, it turns You know horizontally so um, I Love it this so the free makes solo all the difference. comes with the rear receiver hitch she uh, Converted it to two inch and I've seen a lot of people do that for bike racks and exactly. different things but to extend your galley space with this, and this is quite sturdy, and it can adjust to level when it you're can. on different situations. Um, and as you add another battery, we were talking about this earlier, this is also a way to reduce tongue weight. Yes. So if, if you're extending something out of the back of your trailer, you wanna make sure it's balanced, but with an extra lead acid battery, you have some room to spare back here. Right, so. and as far as mods on the inside, I haven't done any, um, except for you know, the space where the air conditioner was up there in the corner. So we got some excellent storage here, some personal touch, which is always nice. And all of these things are mods. We all, you know, these little tension rods and things oh. that we use. Okay, I, I told you a story then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's... And with me, uh, usually I'm camping by myself. So in the winter, in order to avoid the heater situation, I just scoop my bed to this side. <laughs> and then... Oh, I love that. Yeah, I just switch back and forth. Why no, not? And you got extra storage and some versatility. You sleep on the driver's side, sleep on the passenger mm -hmm. side. Yeah, the extra storage. In fact, the store, underbed storage, the very back one opens this way and I just leave it open and my battery boxes fit in there. and. I can get to them. They're not sloshing all around while I'm driving. Nice. Well, I've really enjoyed this and I've enjoyed being your neighbor. So, uh, <laughs> my pleasure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, speaking of battery boxes, I'd like to close with one thing. We've had this conversation. Um, I think a lot of people might be helped by this. So let's, let's talk power stations for a second. So another thing that Allie and I do similarly is we use power stations to extend our capacity more than onboard storage. But Allie actually went through a situ situation that I have warned a lot of people about on the channel, and this is the first time I've been able to have an actual example to show you it. 
This Patriot brand power station is the worst power station that I have ever <laughs> used. Um, people ask me about it all the time. They spend millions of dollars on marketing. They market on my channel. They run commercials for these power stations. It's no good. Um, they're using inferior components. They charge a lot more for what you're getting. And it, when I saw that you had it, I, I asked how you made out. What was your response? <laughs> well, uh, in the long run, I made out like a bandit. But meanwhile, um, it did come with a solar panel. But of course, they have different adapters. So you have to have their adapter to go between the box and the solar panel. Well, mine did not come with that. So it took me months and months and months of trying to get that. And they would send me one, but it was never the right one. So I wasn't able to utilize it other than charging it at home. So in addition to this, if you are a power station nerd, they have like MPPTs that don't actually track. They cut off at like 80 watts, 100 watts, depending on the unit. Um, and if you're looking at it like dollar per watt hour, it's the most expensive unit on the market. So they tell you they'll send you food and flashlights and all this stuff, <laughs> but the actual product that they're, yeah, yeah. there's the solar powered <laughs> power station. How Which did that work? Crap. Yeah, it doesn't work. No, it doesn't work either. But the part that I thought was most amazing <laughs> is when she said she made out with like a bandit. She was so unsatisfied with this power station in fear of her leaving a negative review, an honest review, they gave her an EcoFlow Max. It's a River Max. With a 100 watt <laughs> panel. So they gave her one of the best With power this stations. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course you love that. One of the best power stations in its class, but they're not affiliated. This company literally bought her a different brand's power station because they're afraid of the negative reviews that are gonna come when people find out that their marketing is better than their product. Right, and you know they also market that they're a family company and in fact, the they, many times I was on hold with them, they were, you know, please accept our apologies. Our wait time is longer because we're a family company. We're right. small, blah, 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 blah. Well, that was just, you know, a ploy. Yeah. But um, so I used this one for the USB, you know, to run a fan or, you know, recharge my phone. Yeah. Um, this one, I use my electric kettle if I need to or yeah, exactly. anything else. And so just from the user experience, now I want to be super clear here. This is just our opinions and we are not Absolutely. <laughs> trying to uh, slander any company. What we want to do is help people out. And this is something that I've heard so many times that it was the first time I had a camera to show you that uh, somebody that was new to power stations ended up with this unit and was very, very disappointed, so. Right, and well, to be honest, I haven't been able to utilize this enough to, to have any of the other issues. I just wasn't able to recharge it yeah. out. <laughs> which is know, a pretty key which is why element I got it. <laughs> to right. having a power station. So, but you've been happy with this one. Oh my gosh, this, this is worth its weight in gold. And when your power goes out at home and you want to go car camping and you want to bring your fridge to a barbecue, you don't have to drag the bushwhacker or right. the free solo along with you. So. Um, and actually our power did go out and was out for quite a while and my husband was on call and he was like, I guess I'm going to have to go charge my phone up in the car. I was like, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I think that uh, besides showing people a really cool way to get outdoors. I'm hoping that we save some people money today. So thank you so much. My pleasure. And I had a lot of fun. <laughs>
Snellinger from uh, High Springs, Florida, and this is our 2021 Braxton Creek Free Solo. All right. Okay, so for entertainment purposes, we've actually got a projector that we can mount right here. We have a screen that we just roll up and drop down so that we nice. can watch, you know, big screen TV, and it works out really good. Uh, then we put a Blue Eddy over here in the cabinet so we charge our phones and our watches and they're not hanging all over the place and wires everywhere. Works out pretty good. Other than that, we haven't got a lot of mods inside except for change to an electronic AC with remote control. All right, so this is uh, the tongue box we added. I guess first and foremost, you can see we put a jacket uh, bicycle carrier here for when we want to carry the bikes. I have uh, put my refrigerator in my box so that I could access it pretty easily. I have a, uh, the house battery, and then I have a lithium battery. Uh, I have two chargers because I have an external um, solar panel that I can put off to the side if I need to, but I've got the permanently mounted panel on the top. Very nice. Do you have electric hookups for this site? Uh, we do. All right. So, and if this gets low, we're getting plenty of sun, so I'm pretty sure it's not low. Really smart. And it's a Bluetooth battery, so I can check to see what the charge is. Sure. And you drop the fridge. I see some corner trims up here. And you notice he painted the top of his box white. That's a nice cheap mod that works really well. Uh, nice. See, it's very cold. Excellent. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> They're nice. Mounting the solar was pretty easy. Uh, I just used the cargo carrier, repurposed uh, from our truck that we used to carry stuff on the back or van, whatever. And uh, we can put storage stuff up there, floor mats, whatnot. Very nice. I see he's got hinges on there so we could chase the sun a little bit if yep. he has to. The other thing that I noticed is that he turned the stock cargo carrier on the bushwhacker upside down. So the lip is going down, put spacers by the frame, and that gives you a lot more space to mount a bigger box. Have you had any trouble backing up, jackknifing? Actually, I have an extension on the back of the RAV4, and it has just enough extension with the rack or the uh, trailer hitch that I use that it isn't a problem. Very nice. It probably helps you back up, too. It does. <laughs> uh, Very cool. Well, let's check out the galley. Yeah, the galley's not a lot different, mainly just the... Uh, do have our Brandon Sanderson uh, quote on the back. I don't know if you're a Sanderson Very fan, nice. but we just added the IKEA uh, drawer set up and I keep all my knives organized. This is really nice. And by finding a solution to get the fridge up front, uh, you know, the storage back here is key. Sometimes yeah. I think about doing that myself, but all of the nice accessories here, I see you're going with an, uh, uh, some galley tunes. That's, yes. a, that's not standard. We got tired of the uh, having to switch from inside and not being able to control what we were doing. So I found a multimedia player and it, I had to space it out a little bit. You can see I added a piece of plywood. I haven't really been able yeah. to finish it yet. Um, and then the speakers actually sound good with the Sony stereo. I was yeah, amazed. I know. I, as long as you bang the sawdust out of them, right. they sound halfway decent. I see you did a little plumbing work here. Uh, yeah, this is our fancy schmancy uh, brass, copper, and... Very nice. Works out pretty good. It's what she wanted, so that's what we got. Yeah, no, this is different. Just a little... And yeah. then you can use that to attach and spray a hose back here. Absolutely. And... Very nice. No, I like that. Yep. And then this we is, keep uh, our... Uh, this is a magnet? Yep. Okay. And we just keep all of our electrical cords and um, the vacuum cleaner and uh, nice. the hose in these bags so that they're always easy to find and well organized. I'm getting a lot of ideas here. Now, tell me what that little guy is. <laughs> <laughs> that is a toaster oven that we just saw at a restaurant or a... a retail store you guys take turns one piece of toast at a time uh, you know we just <laughs> it, we didn't have anything to bake anything with but yeah that's yeah. basically the idea all right let me back this camera up so all right works pretty good very similar table it yeah we like have three all... of these so that we can do different things now we've been seeing a lot of these arb touring uh the annex room and the 
awning. How do you make out with this? You like this? We do. We actually uh, use it for our storage. Um, everything that we bring camping, and rather than trying to keep it in the car or keep it in the camper, we just uh, get a clothes drying rack in there. Very nice. And we got an extra refrigerator in there that there's we just a, keep in the car if we're, you know, we can a, take it in and out. Got a fan in there so that we yeah, can. Yeah, it feels really good in here. It's nice and cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, it, this really makes a difference with long-term camping. Um, uh, yes. You know, I went with the external canopy, but these awnings I'm seeing so many of them in person. This is really nice. And this right here, must have. <laughs> <laughs> must have. We're gonna try to find something different because these hold dirt real bad. But. Yeah, no, mine does too, but just keeping it out of your bed sheets in these tiny campers yep. is... Now this little set, these look like uh, Japanese lanterns, but this is a solar... Yes. All right, Amazon? Uh, actually, we got them at uh, the Christmas store. No, okay, yeah. there we go. That's the first time I've heard that this weekend. Uh, all right, so you have to get those in person. Yeah, or you, you maybe probably you get them on, them on Amazon. Amazon. Yeah. All right, very cool. Well, I love the trailer. Um, we're you. seeing a lot of free solos. So this ARB came with your trailer. It did, in fact. And then this was a separate purchase. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Do you the, now the free solo also has a rear hitch? Have that's you used correct. that rear hitch? We have, but we found that if you put too much weight back there, you get the the. It's wandering. picking up on your tongue. Correct. So that is a huge concern for anybody who has small trailers with a rear trailer hitch. You either play the balance game and get your scales out. I mean, he's got a bike rack here, so you could definitely balance the trailer. Correct. But if you go putting your firewood back there, it picks up on your hitch, and that can get pretty dangerous pretty Absolutely. fast. Absolutely. And that's why we put the extra battery up here, and uh, we put the bike rack up here so that if we do want to put something on the back, it's less of an issue. Nice. Now, my last question is going to be with your dual battery setup. I do these a lot for people, but you have separate systems. One is for the lithium and one is for the sealed lead That's acid. Correct. So if you want to take care, uh, take advantage of the lithium on the discharge side, but you're not actually charging that from the converter or the tow vehicle. Correct. Very cool it's, system. And Driving down the highway, it usually charges 100%, even using the refrigerator. So. This is the beauty of fixed solar. It, we're not going to be able to chase the sun as much, but he has the option for portable solar as well. Correct. But this thing is charging. I know mine charged the whole way down I-81. It was it was full by noon. So. Yeah, my, mine was full the whole way. It was full when I left, and it, when I got here, it was 100%. Very cool setup. We will uh, we'll do a video on some of these dual battery setups because I think there's a real advantage to doing this. Yes, well, and if it does get low when we're camping in the shade, because Florida has a lot of shade at the campsites, huh? thankfully, um, I just bought a, a Vtronix charger that does lithium batteries, and I just plug it in and charge it up. Is it way. the blue or the smart? Smart, I believe. Okay, so that's got the app as well. That's what I'm. Well, it doesn't right now. have Bluetooth, but. Oh, then it's probably the blue charger. Okay. The blue yeah. charger doesn't have Bluetooth. <laughs> okay. Then it's the blue charger. <laughs> but yes. the smart charger has yeah. the Bluetooth app. But very nice device, and they really uh, they equalize out the cells and everything. It's top notch. Right. It's yeah. It was a little pricey, and it's only five amps, I think. But I went with the 15. And... I, I should have. <laughs> Let's see. I have it right here. There it is. Let's see. So it's a five amp, that yeah. does have the app. Oh, okay. Oh, it does, doesn't it? it when I'll it says, have to get it. Yeah. yeah. When, and uh, I, it's on the phone I'm record, recording with right now, but okay. the ones that say smart have the, the Bluetooth app. Okay. So very cool device. Excellent. Well, I appreciate you letting me uh, Thank you. check out the site. Thanks. And let's, we're going to go off and see some more Bushwhackers and free solos. installed this piece of vinyl so that it would cover up the hinge and keep it from leaking in but I cut it off at an angle and I should have left it straight and uh, it does definitely deflect a lot of the water but because I cut it off it tends to want to run inside on the vinyl. So he picked up this marine vinyl at Joanne's like the fabric store and what we're talking about most bushwhacker owners know this with just a little bit of overhang here you can gutter the water out while your galley door is up and it's raining what did you fix with? I used double stick Gorilla Tape. So double stick Gorilla Tape, and it looks like you came back over it? With silicone. With silicone. Yeah, RTV. 
Very sweet. I use clear, and then you can see my uh, truck tail light. You know, they have oh, those yeah, tail lights go. that go underneath that I just wired it in. It's kind of rigged on the side here, but but I wired it in the tail lights, and so now we have a high mounted stop lamp with turn signals. Very nice. Chad and Amy Vanover. This is a 2021 free solo. We're from Jacksonville, Florida. Okay, the mods I have done on my free solo. We, um, I actually swapped out the jack so I could lower my tailgate. Yes, so sir. I just moved it over. Uh, had to put my tongue buck box for all the good stuff. Did a kill switch for the battery. Got a little leveling. Stick on so it makes it easy when I get to the campsite. Now I'm seeing a small DC auxiliary switch underneath. What's that? Oh, that's oh oh. This is for my little bling. I added some red lights when I go to. Uh, <laughs> we'll see that in dark, but very nice. I don't like to have a lot of light pollution, so I got that. So it's all cool and red, kind of accent the truck. And it doesn't uh, attract the bugs. That's correct. Yeah, let's go to stick with the outside. Put a little uh, reflective tape on the back of the camper uh, for when we go to the rest stops. So we know he runs into it. We put the IKEA cabinetry in it due to my uh, lack of work craftsmanship. Well, now Chad's rocking the, a really nice fridge in his truck. We'll check that out in a second, but this made a really good use of the space. You like the drawers? Yeah, definitely. Um, just before I have keep food in here, I got my cooking ware here, little odds and ends up top, trash bags, Ziplocs. You always have leftovers. Very nice. So you're rocking some tunes? Yeah, we, we, we prefer the USB wireless uh, speakers rather than our built-in stereo. For we did sure. upgrade the speakers, but I don't like having too loud at campsites due to being polite to other campers. <laughs> Uh, we swapped out, I guess the uh, 12 volt here, so we got our, you can see the voltage on the battery and then USB ports. Very nice. Hey, where you at, Matt? Where you at? <laughs> and I had one other, and we got our the vent sticker here also. Nice. So I'm liking those little baskets. Is that an Amazon thing? It is an Amazon thing. I'm somewhere from the website, from the Facebook group. I've seen the link. Nice, they fit in there real nice. Same thing with the link for the uh, water faucet. Now I know I'm gonna get questions on this because I always do. None of the fittings match. This looks like a Dura faucet style fitting. Some of them are automotive, air. Uh, there's a bunch of, Braxton Creek used four or five different fittings there. So now, did you order yours online and play trial and error or did you get it the first try? First try, uh, both pieces just clip right on. And it matches just like the uh, hose that came with so, it. So yeah, I want to be super clear about this because this is the same style as mine. This is a Dura faucet. I'll throw that in the link in the description, but not everyone has this. A lot of them have the different types of automotive air fittings and compressor style fittings that go in. So you have to match the one that you got. We got our cutting board with little feet. So this way it doesn't slide around as you drive around. Nice. I'm seeing the towel rack. Got the towel holder for all the goodies. And of course, the other mod up from the Facebook group is we re relocated the uh, heat vent from inside. Okay, so you're going out the top now instead of out the side, and you got a lot more space to store. A lot things. more space. I can actually fit skillets in there, which I could not fit flat before, and my lids. Very nice. Going in front. Nothing. Did check the power. 
make sure everything's connected securely. And what did you find? It was good to go. Nice. There's a good first for everything. <laughs> I see you got a little screen to keep the bugs out. Actually, the dealer threw that in. Very nice. I'm sure they made their money from elsewhere from me, so <laughs> I got my $10 screen for free. <laughs> Are included. We added uh, covers for the each door. Nice, block out the light. A little Velcro. A little R value there too for Helps cold and, and hot weather. Show us what you did on the inside. Up top, uh, since it's super hot right now, I actually did some on, on top of the vent. Plus keeps a little darker than the day so I can sleep in a little bit longer. We did do the AC mod to it, added TV, no fans. We just did this, uh, just the insulation so this way the hot air and cold air is separated. I did have to install the side vents also. Okay. We got added some... the nets up top. The four holds on my screens. Show us that magnet phone clip. And I always lose my phone at night. So now I can just Very put it up nice. there and find my phone. Perfect. And I greased my uh, bearings for another video from Brian. <laughs> oh, geez. All right. Well, uh, we're going to switch over because I know we're excited to see this truck. <laughs> So recently I got tired of getting ice every day. So I have my ice cold dual zone cooler. Works pretty good. This is a very, very nice refrigerator. What size is this? This is a 60 quart. So this is, you could bring a month's load of food in here. Is that dual zone? Dual zone. And is that running on, I see a Jackery back there? It is running on uh, the Home Depot special buy oh, oh, Jackery. They all look like Jackery. Oh, it is a Jackery. All it right. is a Jackery. But Home Depot has a different version. It's a little mm -hmm. bit more watt hour for the same price. Very nice. Now, and what size what, is that Jackery? Um, I think it's like a five, around 500. So it's around 500. That's a massive fridge, but it's known to be efficient. What type of run times are you getting? Um, at home in the garage with no food in it, I got about 26 hours. That's pretty sharp. You add a little bit of solar and you're off to the races. Well, what I do is I have the Jackery connected to my inverter that's built into the Tacoma. Very and I nice. charge it as I drive. Perfect. No solar for Chad right now. All right, no solar for Chad. All yeah. right, well, I see that you have spent a lot of time and money making this an outdoor rig. Uh, I have a Tacoma. Mine's not nearly as nice. What is this rack system over top of the tonneau? This is the Voodoo Aluminum Series. Now with this one, you can buy the additional brackets so you can keep your, uh, your cover on there. Therefore, I can keep my cooler in the back and keep the water and weather out there. Very nice. Now something with a third gen Tacoma, since it's lifted, got heavier tires, I did have to put a KD Max tune on it to pull the, uh, the uh, camper. Yeah, so the camper's light, but anytime you go bigger with your wheels, heavier with your tires, your gearing. So the KD, what is it, KD Max? KD Max tune. Same thing as the OV, OV tune. Um, it's a different flavor of it. it. And the biggest thing, it changes the points. Very nice. Points. So now I can drive and keep a lower uh, RPM at 70, 75, or 75 miles an hour. <laughs> My name is Dave Green from Greensboro, North Carolina. Bushwhacker camper, 10 HD. So I replaced the, the rack here on the tongue, got a tongue box uh, so I can secure my stuff in here, the battery. Took off the big tank, got a couple smaller tanks. It's more consolidated. Got my tools, cords, extra stuff in here. And then you can secure it so when you stop, your, your stuff secure. I removed all the stickers. I kind of like it plain, clean. Uh, back to the galley back here. Uh, got the fridge. Nice. Slide in and out. Uh, cut it off for the back, keep it in there. I kept the other cooler though, using that. And uh, built a shelf across here for the microwave, plugs in. Uh, removed the, uh, there was no, no door there, so I added this on later. 
I like seeing what people have been doing with uh, the 10 HGs that don't have the door. That was just something I had, so I just used it. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about your campsite here with the awning, or with the canopy. Yeah, I got the, came with the, uh, the awning out. This is just easier and quicker to, uh, to uh, assemble. Quick, quick setup other than trying to roll that other one out and prop it up and tie it down. This is quick. I like this table here. Tell me about that. Yeah, this this was on, I've seen that on uh, on YouTube. It's uh, it's pretty sturdy. It's kind of pricey, but it, it, I like it. It's under, then I can keep underneath the uh, underneath the awning. Yeah. I don't like to do a lot of cooking in the back, so I set my cooker up right here and do a lot of cooking under here. Very nice. Inside, yeah, it's just me. I had just a single mattress, nice and cozy. My chair, I set up and watch a little TV. Um, pretty comfortable. Very nice. <laughs> Thanks. See you next time. Robinson, uh, we have a 2021 model Bushwhacker model FB. Where are you from? Uh, my wife. Uh, Where are you from? I'm from Kansas City. So my wife took all of the decals off, and uh, between my wife and my daughter, they came up with these stickers. So we could probably get a shot of the back Perfect. and the side. So just another shot of uh, what we got going on here. She she went online and found a whole bunch of things. She got like 20 things and said, here, pick 10 of these. And so I picked some, she picked some, and these are what we came up with. I love it. Give it a little flavor. You gotta make it your own. So I'm gonna talk about my sixth grade carpentry skills. So we, we took out uh, the uh, the Coleman cooler and uh, we meet with my sixth grade carpentry skills. I made a little table thing to go into that space. It actually will pull out and fold up. Um, and then I, I, I bastardized a bamboo cutting board. Um, I'm sorry to the people who made it because it's, 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 ch it's a heck job at best. Honestly, we didn't know that this piece comes out. And so we, he just made the thing to fit with that piece at the bottom. But I know a lot of people have taken the bottom piece to make it their top. Who knew? Who knew? I picked this up at... Uh, Sorry that I'm waving this microphone around. No, We're no. all sharing. Keur Keurig is important. Just yeah. saying. You got shore power, you got Keurig. <laughs> um, I picked this up just recently at the, uh, uh, what's the container store? store? The one? container store. So now I have a drawer because my husband is not qualified to create, to build a drawer. So I also put a nail right here Ooh. to hang. Very nice. Just a simple little thing. Sometimes the simplest ones are the most handy. We're, we're, we're all about as simple as we can get. So I have a little sticking on the back thing here. And it just stuck on there and it fits right nice. Very nice. Let me take a little peek in here. See what we're working with. Uh, the tub. The tub, uh, we use a storage, but it, it fits right perfectly into the sink. So what we'll do is we'll take all the stuff out of the tub and there's no gray water tank, there's no nothing. There's just a little drop spot. So we'll take that out, slide it under, and that's our gray water catch. I so have almost the exact same tub. I do the exact yeah, same thing. It's very handy. And some places you go, you have to. Uh, yes. If they see that you're draining under the trailer, you can get a ticket. Um, this I got at uh, college time. At the time of college they have all the stupid cheap stuff you can find and so this was um, just a dorm room kind of setup 
and we've added some uh you know necessary necessary pampered chef pieces to it but this is totally my speed most of my stuff is yard sale finds and and you know if it fits in there it lasts for a bit and, and absolutely if it's easy to pack so this is a mountain smith table and it just folds up i love it really easy and then the underneath folds down too uh, it's about the size it's about the size of one of those collapsible one of your you know camp chairs it's it'll be about that size once it's all folded up so it just goes in real easy into the the cabin and we pull it out the setup so we went with the iron man because it's cheaper than the arb and um our friends down the way uh, steph, steph and andrea and andrea have them they had them and so we were like okay looks good enough for us we don't need anything fancy so it rained for a good part of last night. Uh, how'd it make out for you? So uh, we had some puddling on top. What's um, really cool though, is that it doesn't, um, it, like the top of the room is another layer. So it, it's not like it's open to the awning. So the inside is dry. Yes. The awning catches it's, it all. Yeah, the awning's like a rain fly on your tent. So there's like a tent on the side of your schwacker. Um, we got it uh, also, uh, so we, sometimes we go camping with the, the granddaughter and soon uh, we'll probably take the grandson. We took the grandson once. He's not old enough yet, uh, but we stuck some cots out here. So wife and granddaughter stand out there. I stayed inside with the grandson. So there's just a little more room. Perfect. So it gives you a little bit more. A little more space. I don't know if I'm going to come up on the mics, but uh, <laughs> yeah. it gives you a little more space and allows you more sleeping quarters. Yes. yes, absolutely. That's the whole plan is that when we take the grandkids, they have a place to be. And we found some great cots for them. So, um, oh, he set out some other things there. So I have this. Mine is the Venti brand, but boy, is this thing nice. It's fantastic. So Brooks USB. has been overheating a lot. So we decided that we needed to double check. I'm a large man, I need cool air. Now I recognize what you have down there. Yeah, that's a, the new air that you um, told us all about a while back. All right, so no sales pitch here. Has it been good for you? Um, yes, it's been a great thing to have. Um, you know, we talked about the fan earlier because Brooks gets hot. And um, so this trip, I was really concerned. And um, so I, I have um, popsicles with us. Now, popsicles camping. Now we left um, over a week ago. We left on Wednesday. Um, so that was nine days ago. And we've had these in here. The so whole time. there's a real testimonial. I'm not lying yeah, when I, mean, I say, you know, it's a, it's a really good product. The compressor is good. Have you used the bottle opener? Have we used the bottle I opener? Have not used, I have not used the bottle opener. <laughs> so Brooks is also very good about making sure we have plenty of bottle openers with us. So this bottle opener has not happened yet, but I will tell you that was a selling point for my husband. <laughs> uh, that a was maybe opener. the clincher. We also have not used this, but I did remember that we had it. Yes, you serve cheese, a yeah. little cheese platter on it. <laughs> and we have um, flipped, I've flipped the lid Every other day, I think I'm flipping the lid for some reason. It really is handy. I've been really happy with it as a unit. So we have a, a happy customer of the new air uh, compressor fridge. Yeah. Hey. Okay. Um, I'm just talking about my shoe holder here. It fits right under this step. I think it came with a back piece too, but I don't know what happened to that. Um, and it folds down 
I throw it on top of the bed. Very, of very hands. handy. Does it get most of it out of the rain? Yeah, it does because the feet, the shoes fit under here. But the other thing we do is we have um, shower caps. Ah. So the shower caps just fit right over the shoe. If you think you might have uh, shoes you don't want to get too dry, too wet, then you just pull out a shower cap and stick it on and um, slide them under there. Good to go. We don't have to smell his feet overnight. And that's an important piece of camping. So we bought these little corner um, buffer things. They're like for toddler furniture, you know, to save your toddler from hitting their head on the corner of the mantle or whatever it is. Um, but his toes would reach. I mean, he's a large man and he takes the entire bed. Yeah. And so his feet are like right there at that air conditioner spot. And so he's like, honey, I'm going to lose a toe if we don't get something to cover I, this. I did like puncture my toe on the corner twice. <laughs> and so, we got we got to have we got to have some so toe guards so an excellent toe mod guards. for the fb you know if you're a big man for sure or big woman or a yeah. big woman that's right <laughs>
I can sit up in it because it's that grandpa style camper top and it, it works. No, it's pretty impressive. I absolutely love this cap. Is that an ARE? No, it was a Craigslist fifty dollar find. You know what brand it is? I mean, it's um, I don't recall. All right. Well, I mean, you see the height. Can we uh, see your sleeping quarters here? Sure. Yeah. Headliner's coming down because when I got it, it was raw fiberglass sure. inside. Sure. You got a little insulation. I, I see you got some like Reflex Tech. You got a lighting system got a lighting back system. here. You have a house battery back here as well, right? Yeah, just a Walmart 27 DC up there in the right hand corner yep. in the box. Got some great ventilation. And now this goes to show, you know, even though you have a bushwhacker, but I mean, we're there's a lot of different ways to get out and enjoy the outdoors. And uh, this is a pretty nice setup. This is very spacious. Yeah, I, I like it because I can sit up in it and change clothes and do those things you need to do in the middle of the night. Very, uh, very so. impressive. Cool stuff. All right, well, let's check out the other side of this tongue box. All right. This is my side of the tongue box. Nice. So I got pretty much maintenance gear here on the left-hand side. Handy, to, easy to get two tools. Uh, this part is flexible as far as where I keep what I keep in here. Uh, I normally keep my hot water heater up here. Uh, this is my solar uh, string lights. I got miscellaneous stuff there, nuts and bolts. And what are you doing for hot water? For hot water, I use the Camp Lux. Yeah, that's that's the, one of my favorites. I just use the the shower enclosure, the one person shower enclosure for now. I got a little. Uh, I got 12 volts in here. I also have a 110 hookup up underneath, and you plug into a 110 back here on the back side. Nice. So, okay. So th there's where the 110 comes in. Also goes into my onboard battery charger that'll keep my battery. When where I put is in the your? You have your 12 volt battery for the camper in here. Back behind oh, okay. the behind yeah, the propane. Yeah very cool yeah. so this is something that i've never seen before and it certainly solves a problem because uh you're always looking for storage and i always recommend people with the pickup trucks if they can uh go with a cap it makes such a big difference but you're doing both and uh i'm into it very cool so the rest of it's kind of a work in progress we this is only our third journey in this unit Again, got to break them in slow, the non-campers. We've been one day, two days. This is our three-night trip. And then we'll go from there and uh, exp expand upon it. Our goal in long term is to visit all 62 national parks. That's amazing. Now, this is also, I think, a first for me. What are we using here as a galley cover? It's a Hasika knockoff. Okay. Amazon special. I, I want to say it's like 100 bucks, but it's got the wings. I'm going to add a couple extra poles on the sides to give us even more shade if we need to. Now, I've seen a lot of Hasikas. This, I mean, just first glance, it looks like it's actually nicer than a lot of what I've seen. It's a red camp. Okay, and it. have you, uh, you said you're still pretty green as far as getting out for longer trips. Have you, It's been raining pretty hard here. Have you had wind? I haven't had any winds. Okay. I have not so. had any winds. But... Uh, other people were saying they were having leaks from where theirs comes down when it drips down and then comes down here. Mine seems to follow along the rails here when it does come through on the other side of the the, the, the galley cover. Very nice. Can you pop a light on? Yeah. Haven't done much in here. Uh, I rerouted the rerouted the heating vent, moved the water pump to give us more storage under here with magnetic catches. Those bigger things. So you have the fridge is. The fridge are you is, using a cooler or do you have a refrigerator? We use both. Okay. We use the fridge and we carry that inside the truck. We use the cooler that came with the unit, the Yeti knockoff. We just slide in there. We keep ice so, in there. Some nice cutting boards. Everything I did was with cutting boards because then it's a little hypoallergenic. So yeah. Um, I'm waiting here because I'm going to get the bouge. 23 and use it as a freezer yeah and then that's... we'll have one as a freezer and one as a fridge i'm actually using mine as a freezer right now i have some ice cream in there <laughs> that's i'm looking for guys on the road so. 
so very cool but uh all right i see you went with some 12 12 volt accessory again the, the four-way uh with a voltmeter switch some usbs and the toaster oven i've been seeing obviously you need shore power generator or a big power station for this but i've been seeing a lot of toaster ovens this weekend um what type of you baking in there or? we can do a lot in there it's actually got a built-in air fryer oh okay so we can air fry bake toast and it kind of is gives us all around ability now to do a lot of stuff have you there. been off grid with it much or are you basically sticking we, to the pedestal we've stuck to the pedestal so far but okay. the idea is we're going to spend two three nights off grid and then um, then go then go back on the grid get nice. recharged up and what are we working with here this is this is a uh, velcro okay well, it's a suction cups it's a, it's with suction cup on i was looking at doing stickers but i wanted to have something i could save for the long term so this something from each trip that we're okay so far. and we're lucky enough to see you just getting started and yeah. here's where we are so very cool that was our first trip one hour away from home that way, yeah. if we wanted to get, it, get back, we could, or if we had any issues. So, okay. Uh, so, spin over here if you would. This is our favorite investment, no doubt. Now, this is something I've talked a lot about on the channel, and you know, you see most people who've been out for a while go this direction. This, I actually have the exact set up here with from the chairs to the clam set, but uh. Tell us what, what your impressions have been. You said it's your favorite. I always tell people this is must have gear, but. It, it's must have because I can be out for days and never get a bug bite. My wife can be out for seconds and get just, a, just like piranhas on it. Yeah, so it seems like a lot of what you're doing is taking efforts to get your wife to come out with you and Absolutely. enjoy what we enjoy doing and, and bringing a little comfort. There's nothing wrong with that. Now it does keep, the, you know, speaking for myself, it keeps the rain out. Uh, you can put the side walls up. I've heated it in the winter. Um, you know, it's a nice place to get out of the sun. It goes up in seconds. Yes. Uh, it takes longer to put the tent stakes, the stakes, the thing down than it does to set the thing up. Now, I have used these a couple hundred times. And what I'll say is they do an incredible job in the wind. But you will eventually start to do your guy wires. Uh, if you get yourself in some real windy situations, they do like to be staked down, uh, you know, from the 45s with the guy wires as well as on the ground. I see you've, did, you've done that, but uh, this is an incredible thing. I always link this in my description, these clam set screen rooms. Very cool. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Okay. So Riley. Riley's saying hello from inside the camper. Have you done much inside? The only thing we've done on the inside is change out the thermostat, uh, put put the, the outdoor lights on two switches, and put vinyl down on the floor. Very we nice. We haven't done anything with the mattress yet, but that's uh, probably something that'll come when we spend a few more nights in it. So you've made a lot of efforts here to get out and enjoy some outdoors with the with the dog and your wife. Has she been happy with the sleeping setup? She, she loves the sleeping setup. It's so, just tough to get her out of there. Sometimes. So you are creating an outdoors person uh, with a couple wise investments. Well done. That's That was the goal. We, we, there's compromises in life to make a marriage work. And she's compromising in doing this and I do things that I normally wouldn't do. Well done. So coming over the side, I see you're using a canopy for like a side entry tent here. The idea is to just test the concept and then look at upgrading to your Max with the zip in, all the features. We're using an old soccer tent, the 299 tarps from Harbor Freight to just yeah, test the concept. It's, it, it's a smart way to do it. Before making now I see investment. you're using the K2 that came out of the camper and you have a 12 volt refrigerator. What are you? You're on shore power now, right? Correct. Yeah. So I asked you before. I yeah. so that's just plugged into the AC. That's just the plugged alternating into the current. AC. Right. All right, and I, you know, this is my game as well. Part of the nice things about these canopies and the canopy rooms that you can't do with the clam set is I hang hangers and clotheslines, something that you can always use at camp. So especially when it, when they get damp and it's a drizzly rainy day, and they're getting a little drier than they might have. 
Nice. Well, this certainly is impressive. And to find out that you're just getting started, I'm going to be real excited to uh, come back and see you again and see what you've done by next year. Well, thanks for the inspiration. I appreciate it. Brian. All right. Well, I, I'm hoping that a lot of people see this and find you an inspiration. So uh, get outdoors, even if your partner isn't super excited about it. You uh, spend a few bucks and <laughs> see what you could do. Hi, my name is Steph. Uh, this is my Bushwhacker 2020 FB. Uh, we bought it secondhand uh, from a couple that only had it for about six months. Uh, they did two trips and uh, with the long waiting list, we decided to go for a secondhand one and we appreciate that we did it. Uh, we added a few modifications and we've added an ARB room and an Ironman awning. Uh, both have got rooms. Uh, the Ironman uh, room is not set up at the moment. However, we set up the ARB room because it was just with the weather being you know, hot and uh, the rain. We decided that, okay, um, this is uh, the best setup that we can do. As you can see, it's airing out. Um, it's set up. It's set up in storm mode that you can notice the, the, the slope going down, the water to run off. I've also jacked up the, um, the corners, uh, pulled it up so that the water, if it hits, doesn't go into the thing. The water will go through here, but it will not go through here. So with a bungee system, I pulled this up. Very nice. So one <coughs> of the things that I'm really excited about, and we'll talk about this in a bit, but a lot of times people are talking about whether they get the Ironman or the ARB. <coughs> Here's a situation of somebody that has them both has been using them extensively and we'll be able to see we'll come back to this because i want to look at a couple other things first but i would love to hear the pros and cons of an actual real world side by side of these two awnings but uh let's start up front okay so basically <coughs> a standard we replaced the the tray with a northern tool i believe to track the supply is the same one but it's a standard box uh which which we put the battery that is inside, I've covered it. I've got all the tools, the jacks, and everything that supplies needed. Um, what we also did... Cut off switch in the back. We put the, the, the cut off switch, which obviously during uh, storage or, you know, when you don't need it, we switch it off. Sure. We've also insulated it, uh, made a point of insulating the, the contacts so in case any of the yeah, tools would touch. so they cut the switch through and was able to insulate the inside to avoid shorts. Tell me about what's going on here because I really okay. like that. So with, we had the, the, the original time we did, we took the, the fitting, we threw the other fitting away. We got a stainless steel, what I call it, the boat fitting. Mm -hmm. And we had it fitted over here first. And we found that with the cornering, um, with a very sharp corner, the tank would it touch could, the car. You the could actually years. jackknife into yeah. the vehicle. Yeah. So, so you slid this back. And it's perfect. It clears perfectly because there's more in the corner and there's enough space for, unless you do an extreme jackknife. I love it. I love it. So I've also put levels in so that I can see that when you the, um, the bushwhacker is level or not. Perfect. As you can see, it's slightly to the back so that the air conditioner can run the water off into the back. Now, anyone who has a stock bushwhacker is going to see this right away. What do we got here? There, what I've done is I've added a city water connection. So basically what I've done is I've uh, connected it up to the, the pipe that 
took the, the antifreeze. I did a few modifications. Oh, okay. I actually connected so it to that So he's using part. the winterized tube off the sure flow. Once the water pressurizes, you can isolate so it's not actually filling your reservoir. No, it doesn't fill the reservoir. I still kept that original. So and you have the option to fill the 24 gallon reservoir, but he added the city water connect that most of us wanted. <laughs> and then to do some little bit more modifications, I took the standard fitting that uh, came with the bushwhacker that was over here. I replaced that with a, um, a spigot, which uh, is flexible, movable, and also doesn't switch on. And then I moved the other fitting down to the bottom here. So you still have the spray. I you still have, have the spray, spray when you need it. And it's ideal that we can like sort of wash our feet, wash the dog. I love it. This is the genius stuff that they should be paying t attention to. But speaking of paying attention, nobody's going to be paying attention to us right now because they're probably talking about this. <laughs> so before we go any further, this looks like original artwork here. You want to tell me about what's going on? Yes, uh, so this is basically uh, latex flow art, which we have then sealed in with epoxy. And it, what we do is we basically flow a large sheet of various shades of paint. And uh, we get the patterns out on here and then we cover it with epoxy. We do not use any oil in any of our uh, flow art that creates the bubbles and that because uh, oil and epoxy do not mix. Right. This top shelf was just made with the scrap pieces that was left over but after. But I'm seeing the continuity yeah. of your pieces as they come well, except down. Except for this piece, which was actually right down. Uh. <laughs> we, we made a mistake that when the door, when we were doing the design, we forgot about this. So I had to cut the original to do that. Aha, uh -huh. so. well, it gives a character. We all know, we, <laughs> anybody who's done these projects, it's, uh, it's courageous of you to immediately point out the, uh, you know, the, the character parts because we, do, we know we all have them when we work yes. on these projects. But this is incredible. It is the most unique galley that I've seen and getting to hang out with you for a little bit, it's got your personality which, you know, when, you, when you're making something for yourself, that's, that's the best part. Yeah, it's definitely, there's nothing run of the mill about it, right? And we just then made, extended our art to cover the, the, the basin. Uh -huh. So we have the standard basin. We have these little dishes that we can put underneath, catch water if we need to. However, that's there. We've got an extra work surface. Um, then what I've also done is we've added this little table. I see what this rack is for. That is what we call <laughs> the booze rack. So basically pots and pans. But the stuff forks, you use equipment. most is out is out on display. <laughs> yeah. Other miscellaneous and then the most important, the booze cabinet. Um, unfortunately, when you're closing this one bottle, this bottle has to go uh -huh. and get put on the side. Yeah, for the oh, closing yeah. because of the angle. Sure. The rest of them just all get pushed in and they just fit in perfectly. Very nice. So what I've also done is uh, besides building uh, this shelf, which drops down. Oh, I love it. Um, I do I've, have this hardware. Nice. Yeah. And what I've also done is I put a um, plug here, an extra plug. Okay. So the power see. supply that came from here I then brought it down to here. I love it. So you so have some 110. 110 uh, available. Below. You do need shore power for that or an inverter to use. Yes, no, but you need, it allows you need shore you to... power. So that's for, for the stove, which now underneath here, it, we, you notice we can pull this out. This whole thing comes out. And there's our, there's our stove. We've closed that panel and moved the switch up to there. I love it. The, the, the pump switch was always in the way. Yep. So he has full auxiliary set of switches here, a couple of 12 volts and a battery meter. Very, very nice. So this is covered and this hides our electric stove, which is on the table. So we could put the electric stove here, plug it in or cook on the table. So if you've got an electric site with electricity, you can use this. Site without electricity, this comes off and then we cook on gas. And then obviously our groceries and all that gets stuffed in here. This is for the pet food, koozies, spices, coffee. 
uh, salt and other miscellaneous and then just a little box with plastic bags that we just shove in here all the time. You never have too many. And that always our supply which we hook over here we've got a, a garbage supply. One of the things that I'm seeing that I really like is that so many of us kind of search high and far to find containers that fit in here just making them <laughs> was really nice. You could put these together and mail them to people on the Bushwhacker oh, forum yes. and they and you would have customers. Do, what they could do is, you know, like I said, this is a custom size because it, now this one is my, what we call the coffee tray. Takes my percolator, takes my coffee, takes the sugar and the two mugs. So when we want coffee, we go and put it on the table. We don't have to reach in. I've also just put a thermometer as well, just to let us know what the weather's like yeah. the next day and the humidity, that's important. Ah, that's... It tells us what the humidity yeah, so you is. you can see, folks, that the humidity is too high. <laughs> oh, yes. I want to talk about the inside for a second. Sure. So basically what we've done is that um, we've folded this in and we've attached the towel just to keep the dog in. Um, but we also have made a uh, sheet, a canvas sheets that go down the bottom. They Velcro in and they close off the whole bottom. So in winter, we keep the snakes out and we also keep the heat in. Nice. And it can keep the bugs out. We didn't attach it for this trip because we knew we were going to have a lot of rain. So we just set up in rain mode. So uh, we do have the sheets underneath. Um, to, to, to close off the bottom, then we can actually bring it down and we just a little bit of a duct tape connect all the sides over. I love it. Now so, looking around this room, this is this is nice. I wonder how much of this I can actually catch on camera, but it, it is a nice full extension. Um, it's fitted really nice. I'm really liking the ARB. This is a nice little mod. But That's the, a little thing that they supply with, that you can put little miscellaneous. So now, this came with the ARB yes. annex room? Came with the room. Another Very thing nice. that you need to notice is on the corners they've got a little zipper hole where you can bring your power cable in. And then oh. they've got these little hooks that oh. go all around and you run your cable. So you don't have the cable at the bottom, but you run your cable to where you need it. That is slick. Now this guy I recognized, how do you like the newer? This is an awesome investment that we did. Basically fridge and freezer. As you can see, ice is still frozen. And that's two days old ice. It's frozen. <laughs> He's not um, lying. So this is, this is the second real world testimonial. Uh, third, if you count mine, that we've got on this trip. You know, we found some scorching deals on these, and this appears to be one of the best uh, cool, cool refrigerator combos oh, for the yes money. Oh, yes, it is. So. Um, it was at a good price. It's really value for money. The beauty about it is it's got two power supplies for the car as well as for 110. And the wheels, the handles, but the best feature, right, is this bottle opener. <laughs> oh, yeah. That you need. But we have bottle openers in various spots, <laughs> yeah. so in case... All right, so uh, then, I'm loving I'm loving the table. This table is another best investment that we did. Um, the name of the brand is uh, basically King Camp. Mm -hmm. King Camp. King Camp, and um, it's one of the best investments we also made with the rod because, as I say, it rolls up, folds away, and it's wherever you need a table. Um, we've also had a small modification. We've got uh, what we call a porta potty, which we don't need to use, yeah. thanks to the toilet being around. But in emergencies, we have the porta potty underneath. Very nice. All right, so uh, let's check out. We saw the ARB side. Now I know the Iron Man side is not uh, set up. You have a room to do that, but, but let's take a look at the Iron Man side. Okay. So basically, on the Iron Man side, the rooms are similar. The only difference between the Iron Man that is that only one side opens up. So the other side is firm. Okay. But the beauty of the Iron Man is the floor zips off. So when you put it at the right height, your room can come up to that level or touch the ground. You can just by setting the poles. 
So just to make sure I got this right, even though we're not seeing the room, you do have one. So it, the one downside is it has a single door, so it doesn't have well, dual doors. Well, it has the two areas, but only one door opens. One door opens, Whereas this one, but the bottom opens. on zips, which would be really handy depending on the surface and the weather. Like say we made a, the wife made a simple, simple little uh, curtain, simple rod. This is a table runner. This whole thing is a table runner. Uh -huh. And folded. It was cut in half, sewn, with little hooks. So you can have either you can have it this way or you can have it this way. That's yeah, pretty and slick. You can have it even more. So that helps to set up. All right. Well, obviously, you continued your artwork on the inside and made this your own. Uh, yes. Tell me a little bit about it. That's flow art. That's also flow art. The only difference is we didn't use epoxy to seal it with. And our work was turned yellow with the, the, the varnish that we used. And what we did, we added a simple shelf in to put your cell phones and that was always reaching behind your head. So this, this sort of helped a bit. Then because of a CPAP machine, I made a small shelf that it keeps the CPAP level. And then I just had a, a hook that I hang up the the, the CPAP with so it's not in the way. See, this is really nice, and I'm speaking with more and more people that are using their CPAP machines, you know, get a good night's sleep, you know, working with sleep apnea and all this. But uh, to get them set up in our tiny campers, I, I think you have a really good idea there, and I bet there's a lot I've of people that- I've got a 12 that... volt uh, power pack inside here. Yep, and it just tucks nicely in the corner. Yeah. Very nice. And I just, what I did was the light fitting, took two wires from the light fitting because it's 12 volts and I just ran it to that little plug point and that supplies my 12 volts to the, uh, the CPAP machine, Perfect. which is a power inverter. And then we added a TV, um, which is on a swivel, so you can pull that out. And then during the trip, we then uh, eclipsed together. Um, Are you using the over-the-air cable port on this camper, or do you use uh, Netflix and... Netflix and that. Uh, what we do is that uh, we use our cell phones, we make it a mobile hotspot, we've got unlimited data, so we can just uh, stream the data across. It's a smart TV, it's simple. Um, does that, now I was looking at smart TVs, I don't spend a lot of time in my camper, but does that have a 12-volt option? You can, but it's expensive. Okay. So let's go. This is, okay. as I say, we, we put it on. A, uh, so what I've done is I made, oh. I took that and I made an, what we call an I-beam. So this is solid. It's, it's absolutely solid. We just throw the junk in there. But this way, the TV, no matter how hard road, it doesn't break off. Very, and very nice. for the trip, we do have a cabling, which we then just clip in and close it up. Perfect. I see you gave yourself some shade from the morning sun. Yes. So this is just a little Velcro setup so that the sun doesn't come in in the morning. Velcro, a teardrop camper's best friend. <laughs> and or it's a simple What do they black... call it? Velcro is a copyright. They call it hook and, <laughs> hook and loop. <laughs> yep. And basically, if you notice, it's black here. It's closed off because then the sun is not in our eyes. Let's the air in but and you out. You still have ventilation. And we just put a little deflector here because the air can blow straight. Yeah. Either left or right. We deflect the air upwards. So it sort of comes around and it gives cools the whole Gives cabin a little down. bit of ventilation yeah. and a nice motion there. And I see you did the same thing as me on the heat side. Yeah, the heat side, which because was just otherwise little... my foot would be burning, so. Yeah, and it, it, it also, when my blankets get pushed up against it, it that keeps them from actually blocking the vent, yeah. which, Then you basically know, what, if you notice, my blankets it's a simple ripple. rig that it, it's, just what screw it in on the yeah, sides. I, I got the Flame King one on Amazon. It comes with a pack of two. <laughs> Looks like the same one. Yeah. yeah. Very, very nice. Now you have standard AC mods for the FB. So I see you cut the vents out the side. Yeah. And, and did you do fans or no? Uh, no, that is uh, just two, that is two fans on either side. Oh, so you did do DC yeah. fans. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. And then I changed the Lux Pro first modification that was done was this item here, the best. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
huge mod for me. It made my life a lot nicer in the winter. And, and then, I was using it in the AC just to see what temp it was. It's a nice DC thermometer. And then if you notice that there's a black Velcro over here in the inside of the doors. Yes. We actually have a, a what we call a mosquito screen. Oh, with the magnetic snaps. And the magnetic snaps down the middle. So we bought a full size uh, magne uh, door, magnetic door snap. Cut it in half. It fits perfectly here. Closes off. You can get in and out. 